Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Today we'll be evaluating this sum, um, which can uh, be described with the phrase the alternating sum of the reciprocals of the odd cubes. And we're going to be using this formula uh, that I derived, I believe, two videos ago. Now this is basically a form of the Fourier series formula. Um, going from th this will be good for x on the interval negative pi to pi inclusive uh, so the closed interval negative pi to pi um, so uh, in that formula we will let f of x equal x squared and that's going to give us the following okay so after that we're just going to evaluate the integrals in that um, you, that first integral uh, is going to evaluate to pi squared over 3. I'm not going to show that work. That's fairly trivial stuff. Um, this integral, uh, which you can see right uh, here, that's going to evaluate to 0 for all integers n. Well, actually, that's going to evaluate to 0 no matter what. I don't know why I put for all integers n. Um, because that's going to evaluate to zero for all continuous variables n. Um, but this one uh, only converges to this. This only evaluates to this for integers n. And I'll let you uh, kind of, if, if you don't believe me, I'll let you figure that out for yourself. Um, cosine nx, um, it, yeah. If you evaluate that um, and you let n be an integer, you will see that it evaluates to this. And I don't want to show all the work involved in that. Um, you can figure that out for yourself if you uh, just go ahead and perform the integration by parts twice. And you will see that it, it does indeed um, evaluate to that, provided that n is an integer. Okay. So we're just going to substitute those values back into our formula um, and then simplify it. And this is what you end up with. Okay. So the next step, we're going to integrate both sides of this equation with respect to x, just like that. And if we perform that integration, you'll see that we get this. That's just um, pretty standard anti-differentiation right there. And um, we were able to bring that integral sign inside this summation um, because the only term that depends on x, and that's what we're integrating with respect to, is this cosine nx. So we can bring that integration right inside that sum. That's what I did there. And then if you perform that integration, which is fairly simple stuff, um, you'll get this. So we have a constant of integration now that we need to uh, figure out. So all we need to do to figure that out is set x equal to 0, because this has to hold true for all c. So if we let x equal 0, we will see that c is equal to 0. And there's, there's y right there. Okay, so our, um, our integrated equation becomes just this. So now we're left with just this. All right. So next step, we're just going to let x equal pi over 2. And if we do that, we get this, and then we get this. And I'm, again, I'm not going to show the, like, the algebra involved in that. Um, you know, it's, it's a little bit involved, um, but it, it's not bad. And you can easily get from here to here. It, it's, it's really not that bad. So now we're just left with that. Okay, so... Um, let's use the formula that, uh, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of any a sub n can be broken up into its odd and even part. It's even and odd parts. Uh, basically it's going to be equal to this sum. And, uh, I'll let you guys ponder that. If you've not already seen that, just go ahead and, uh, think about that and you'll, you'll realize why that's true. Okay, and we're going to um, substitute a sub n is equal to that right there. Um, and that wasn't just random. That's right here. That's our a sub n. Okay, 
So using this formula with a sub n equal to this, we get this. We can split it into its even and odd parts just like that. Literally, all we do is um, anywhere we see an n, uh, we replace we replace it with 2n right here. That's all we did. We just replaced n with 2n. And then likewise, for this one, all we did was replace n with 2n minus 1. So that's, that's what we have. Okay. So let's simplify each part of that. We're going to be simplifying this, and we're going to be simplifying this. Well, this is just going to go to 0. For all integers n, we're just going to have sine of n pi. Um, sine of 0 is 0. Sine of pi is 0. Sine of 2 pi is 0, and so on. So every single one of these things is going to be 0. So that term is just going to cancel out. All right. But what about our odd terms? So our odd terms look like this. And I'm not going to show um, how you know, the, the derivation of this, you know, in any sort of fancy way, I invite you to just go ahead and plug in n is equal to 1 into this part, then go ahead and plug in n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. And you will see that it follows this pattern, that this part right here is exactly equal to negative 1 to the n. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into great detail on that, um, if you're confused on it, again, like I said, just go ahead and substitute, uh, you know, various values for n. Start with 1, go to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc., and you will see that it exactly follows that pattern. All right, so um, this is equal to that. All right, so we're going to substitute those into this. And what we get is this. So we know that this is now equal to simply this, because if we substitute this, which is zero, into this, and this, which is this, right here, we just get that this is equal to this, which we also know previously is equal to negative pi cubed over or negative pi cubed over 32. So this is what we're left with. And then all we have to do is multiply both sides by negative one. And on this side, um, we'll multiply by negative one by adding one uh, to our exponent right here. And that's just going to flip the side. So we end up with this result. So that's it. Um, we just derived the result for the alternating sum of the reciprocals of the odd cubes, and that is equal to pi cubed over 32. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that, and we will see you next time.